All right, welcome everybody. This is uh, worksheet 39, so we're really just kind of hammering home ablative absolutes. Okay, we're just going to do a quick little overview of uh, how they work, what they mean. Uh, first page here is just Latin examples, so we're just going to stick with the, the sort of plain with translation. And then on the back, we'll do a little practice with uh, composition and some participle charts as well. Not sure if anybody will be joining us. I know it's a little bit late, 5 p.m. for a stream, but big meeting today. So um, first and foremost, ablative absolutes, background information. So this is an extra clause of sorts that goes at the beginning of a sentence to kind of inform the main clause, give me a little bit of, you know, context as to what's going on. When we translate, we want to stick uh, at first with this kind of very stock translation. We start with the word with, then we translate the noun, then we translate the participle. Very important to do it in that order. So for instance, our first example here, which I know we covered in class, uh, itinera is an, uh, a journey. So we're just gonna plug right in with the journey. And then we have to translate our participle correctly. Confecto is a perfect passive with the journey having been completed with the all important dot, dot, dot at the end to show that that is not a complete thought. We need the rest of the sentence. Needs to be in that order too, with the journey having been completed, not with the having completed journey, having been completed journey. You wanna say with the food having been eaten, not with the eaten food, because we want this to be almost like a new, an extra sentence that's been tacked on the front, which means you gotta put your noun first before you put your verb. We don't know what the rest of the sentence is, so we're just gonna stick with the with translation, with the journey having been completed. If we knew what the rest of the sentence was, we could change that word with to something a little bit better. We could make it after the journey had been completed, since the journey had been completed, because the journey had been completed, uh, when the journey had been completed, but we don't know. So we're just gonna leave it at that, okay? Uh, number two and number three, I believe we did in class together, so I'm just gonna kinda speed through those uh, real quick. Multa laude, that's a lot of praise. So with much praise. Data is a perfect passive. So you could say having been given. The having been is always um, kind of optional, especially when you're doing the, um, the with translation. So with much praise, having been given, and then me, he, to me. With much praise having been given to me or with much praise given to me. Again, all by itself sounds a little clunky, but if I had the rest of that sentence, maybe you'd say, um, after much praise was given to me, uh, my friend was happy. My friend was excited for me, something like that. Number three, we have youenibus. Those are youths, young people. So with the youngins, I'm just gonna go with youngins. But you could translate it as young people, young men, juveniles. I like youngins. I don't know if that's exactly how you spell. I'm taking off the G for youngin and then putting the S to make it plural. I don't know if that's correct. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, with the youngins, uh, currentibus. So this is our first example with a present active participle, currentibus. So we just translated ing. With the youngins, running ad urbem to the city. With the youngins running to the city, the old folks were sitting around doing nothing. Who knows? We don't know yet. We don't have that part of the sentence. Uh, number four, equitatu peditatu qua. So the qua here means and, so we're joining these two. We have an ablative singular, we have an ablative singular, and that's why opugnaturis is ablative plural, because you add up your two singulars, you get plural. So with the, now equitatu peditatu, these are groups of soldiers, specifically uh, cavalry, those are your horse soldiers, and infantry, those are your foot soldiers. What's up, Kimberly? 
with the cavalry and the infantry. Opugnaturi, so with the U-R, that means it's one of those future active participles. We have a couple different ways we can translate it. About to, going to, uh, planning to, gonna, finna, however you want to do it. I'm just going to stick with the about to. Uh, oh, send pics. I don't know or if you're in the Discord. If you're in the Discord, throw some pictures in there. Uh, with the cavalry and infantry about to attack. Uh, Pugnaturis would be about to fight. All Pugnaturis is uh, about to attack. All, right. All Pugno, bring the fight to you. Uh, and this is really where I turned you guys loose to work in those uh, breakout rooms. So I want to make sure everybody's got some good... <laughs> yeah, there's a Discord. Um, I will... I'll make sure to get you a link. Uh, I'll just finish this up and then um, I'll be sure to get you a link. Uh, so an arku is a bow, okay? So with the bow, intento is kind of tricky because it has the NT, but it's not a present active participle. It's just the fourth principal part happens to be intentus. It's like teneo becomes tentus, right? Tendo becomes tentus. So uh, don't get fooled by that NT. This is a having been. With the bow having been, when you look up intendo, it has a lot of different meanings, but with a bow, it is the act of drawing the bow, meaning pulling the string back. So with the bow having been drawn, magna cum cura, with great care. With the bow having been drawn with great care, again, in a sentence, after the bow was drawn with great care, since the bow was drawn with great care, the archer uh, hit his target. Might be a, a, a full sentence, what it might sound like. Okay. Number six, we have duobus fluminibus. A flumen is a river. So duobus with two rivers. Then I look at my participle, it is fluentibus. So that is one of my ing participles. That's entibus. That's actually uh, showing the participle. Fluo means to flow. So with two rivers flowing, propeopidum near the town. Remember that extra stuff always goes in the middle. Okay. With two rivers flowing near the town, the water supply was always, you know, plentiful. Why was the water supply plentiful? Because there are two rivers flowing near the town. So that's how you connect these two things. Number seven there is all ablatives. So no extra stuff in the middle, just uh, grawibus, walneribus. These are uh, serious wounds, or literally heavy wounds, but... Uh, with serious wounds, Akeptis, fourth PP, so having been, and now you really have to choose a word that makes sense when you're talking about wounds. Wounds are received, wounds are taken, wounds are suffered, that's the idea. Uh, so with serious wounds having been uh, taken, you take a wound, take an injury, sustain with serious wounds having been sustained. This is where you just kind of pick an English word that means you got wounded, essentially. Uh, with serious wounds having been taken, the soldier did not survive, right? Or would not, would not likely survive. Number eight, proxima tribu. So this adjective proxima means uh, close by or nearby, like approximate. So with the nearby tribe, conventura, so ura, it's another one of those future uh, participles. With the nearby tribe, about to convenio, about to convene, about to... Uh, come together, about to meet. No biscum, with us. With the nearby tribe about to meet with us, 
a treaty would soon be signed. Because the nearby tribe was going to meet with us, uh, since the nearby tribe was going to meet with us, but since we don't have that second part, we'll just stick with the width. This one, number nine, I just stole right from Caesar because he uses this one a bunch. Uh, he's Rebus, those are things. Uh, with these things, Kognosko means to learn or to discover. With these things having been learned, Ab Imperatore by the commander. couple more here. Uh, te, which is the ablative of tu. So the uh, noun here is you, or in this case, the pronoun. With you, clamante, so that is present active. Uh, with you, shouting. And then that little word in the middle, hairy, uh, is an adverb. It means yesterday. Now that one seems real ugly when you leave it in that translation with you shouting yesterday. But if we were to put it into a sentence, we might say something like, when you were shouting yesterday, I was really upset. Or since you were shouting yesterday, I was really upset. While you were shouting, I was upset. Um, so when you change it to a better word than with, it'll sound a little bit better in English. Domibus, those are houses. So with the houses, ardeo is to burn, arsis, burnt. With the houses having been burned, having been burnt, I think having been burned uh, in the battle, in Proelia. With the houses having been burned in the battle, the people had nowhere to live. Why did the people have nowhere to live? Because their houses got burned down the river uh, in the battle. Or maybe it's an although. Even though the houses were burned in the battle, the people still protected their property, protected their uh, possessions. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, and our last one here, altis, the adjective tall, and we have quercibus, which are oak trees. So with the tall oak trees, dekisis, fourth principal part. Uh, so having been kido is the root of uh, kaido, which means to cut, and de kido means to cut down. So with the tall oak trees having been cut down by my padre. With the tall oak trees having been cut down by my father, there wasn't any shade in our yard. Right? There wasn't any shade in our yard because dad cut down all the trees. That's the, how the, the two would connect. Okay. So again, we're just plugging and chugging into this formula with the noun verbing, with the noun having been verbed, uh, depending on what participle you have. What I'm not going to ask you to do on Thursday or Friday is this, which is uh, going the opposite direction. So this is just for practice. This is just for us to get our hands dirty a little bit and, and practice with you know, how these things are made. So with the letter having been written today, first thing, right, with the letter having been written, so in terms of what kind of participle, <laughs> we're gonna use, I know I can't, I have almost no agency here. Uh, perfect passive, having been written. So the next thing we need to do is take our noun letter, make it ablative, which would be Epistula. We need to take having been written, so the verb to write, scribo. We need the fourth PP, scriptus. We need to make it agree with this word. So epistula. Oops, I almost did Italian there. Epistula scripta. That right there, just those two little words, 
is with the letter having been written. All you need in Latin is two words. Any of these extra words like today, right? We put that in the middle. Hodie. And the all important dot, 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 right? Because that is not a complete uh, thought just yet. So again, make the noun ablative, the letter, put it in the ablative case. Make the participle, make it ablative, right? To agree with the noun, epistula scripta. And then any of the extra words we stick in the middle. Uh, number two here, with time permitting, so because we have an ing, we're going to use present act, uh, present active, it's spelled, whoa, uh, present active, okay, we take the word time, which is tempus, temporis, and we make it ablative, tempora, the word to permit, permito, so we need to make that one into the ing, which is a little bit more work. Permito, permitere becomes permitens, permitentis, permitenti, permitentem, permitenta. Typically with an ablative absolute, you're, if you're doing ablative singular, you're going to use the e more than you're going to use the i. So it's uh, tempore permitenta with time permitting. And that's it, two words. Time in the ablative, permitting in the ablative. Done, easy. Number three, with the hunter about to find. So since we're talking about somebody who's about to do something, we're gonna use future active. The word hunter, venator, when natoris becomes when natora, like Salvatore, my name is ablative, Salvatore, anything tora, that's a, a person who does something. When natore, hunter, Salvatore, savior, Biscatore, fisherman, Bistore, baker. Uh, Whenor is the Latin verb to hunt. About to find, so the verb to find, in venio. I need the fourth PP, inventus. Now I need to make it future active, so inventurus. And the last thing is to make it ablative, inventura. Venatura inventura, with the hunter about to find. And then the stag, which is the thing he's about to find, we're going to make that accusative because it's a direct object. And we're going to put it in the middle, kerwum, with the all important dot, dot, dot. And again, remember, we start with an ablative, we end with an ablative, we hide all the extra stuff in the middle. That way that word kerwum doesn't get sucked up by some other part of the sentence, right? You don't treat it like it's the direct object of the main verb or doing something else. So we keep these things kind of tightly compact. Uh, number four, while the king and queen are ruling the land, since we have an ing, we're going to use present active, right? King in the ablative, rex regis, becomes regga. Queen in the ablative, regina. And an easy way to join the two of them together is just to put qua. It's a little bit easier than an et, right? Mainly because we just want to keep it as, as short and sweet as possible. Ablative absolutes are usually pretty short. Yeah, no worries. Hey, it's all good. Uh, while the king and queen are ruling the land, so we've got the king and the queen in the ablative. Ruling, the verb is rego, regera. So I need to make it uh, the ing participle. So regains, regentis, regentibus. And it needs to be plural because we're talking about the king and the queen. 
And then the last step is the land, which again, like the stag, is the thing they're ruling. It's the direct object. So we're just going to stick it in the middle. Teram. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, dot, dot, slash. Dot, dot, dot. Rege, reginaque, teram regentibus. That's a nice alliterative. Rege, regina, regentibus. Because they're all related. And then finally, since the speech had been heard, since it's the ED, we're going to use perfect passive. Speech in the ablative, a speech is an oratio, like an oration. Oratio orationis. So the ablative would be oratione. Oratione. No Italian, no Italian. Oratione heard audio audire. So uh, we want the fourth PP auditus. And to make it ablative, we get audita. I'm making it feminine because speech is feminine. It just is feminine. Oratio is feminine. With the speech having been heard by everyone, the phrase by everyone, ab omnibus. Right? Omnes in Latin means everybody. So ab omnibus, by everybody. When your teacher says salvete omnes, they're saying hello, everybody. And all important, dot, dot, dot. So we're not done yet. Okay? One more time, I'm not going to make you do that on the quiz. You're not going to have to go uh, English to Latin. That's the challenge play. And finally, just a couple of participle charts just to round it out, just to make sure we're keeping these skills, uh, you know, fresh in our minds. So let me just do a little bit of formatting here. Uh, as I did on previous the previous worksheet, we're going to make our participles. Uh, get out of here. We're going to make our participles ablative since we're looking at ablative absolutes just to practice those endings. And boom, boom, boom. here we go. So the verb colo, to worship, we want ablative, masculine, and plural. So that's going to be colo, colera, becomes colanes, colentis, colentibus, which is people who are worshipped. Worshipping? One P, two Ps. Looks good. This participle doesn't exist. We put an X in the box. This participle doesn't exist. We put an X in the box. Uh, and then perfect passive, we use the fourth principle part. Oh no, don't you save those for for you know somebody else. But thank you, Kimberly. So Colentibus worshipping uh cultis which would be uh, worshipped. I don't know about those two T's on worshipped. I like the way it looks. Uh, if you think about what a cult is, right? A cult is a group of people and somebody's being worshipped. Yeah, there's some kind of a leader. Uh, future active, we get culturis. That means about to worship. And then finally, for the last participle, we go back to the cola stem from the first one and we get colendis people who must be worship oh i thought it was gonna fit all right we'll have to bump that down that's okay so colentibus coltis culturis colendis four participles Uh, those are different, Kimberly. If you're talking about the channel points, those are just from watching. They allow you to like highlight your message. They're not very exciting. So feel free to highlight all of your messages from here on out. Uh, Fodio fodera to dig. So we're going ablative, feminine, singular this time. Since it's fodio, we're going to get fodienta or fodienti. That would work too. That is someone who is digging 
That participle doesn't exist. That participle doesn't exist. Perfect passive, fourth principal part. So we're going to go falsos, but we're going to make it falsa. And that's something that's been dug. So falsa. The word falsa can also mean in Latin as a noun, a ditch. And what is a ditch if not something that has been dug? See, you did learn something. That's what we do here. Fosura is someone who is oops, about to dig. And then we go back to the original stem. Fodienda. We have to have the I and the E. Fodienda is something that must be dug. So forienta, fossa, fosura, fodienda. Kind of two of each. Two fodia and two fos. And our last one here, punio, to punish. These are going to be ablative, neuter, and plural. So punio means I'm going to have punientibus. Those are people who are punishing. This one doesn't exist. This one doesn't exist. Uh, punitis for ablative plural, that fourth principle part. People who've been oops, punished, not pushed. Punituris, people who are about to punish. And then finally, puniendis, people who must be punished. And that's all for today. I'm going to stream again tomorrow. I know it's the half day, but um, I will stream out worksheet 40 um, probably in the afternoon at some point. Give you guys a chance to work on it yourselves. Quiz Thursday or Friday, basically just these worksheets. So a little participle chart, some part, uh, some ablative absolutes like you saw on the front, Latin to English, just translate. And then there'll be a sentence for you to translate. So on worksheet 40, we'll practice with full sentences as well. Kimberly, thanks for coming. I promise at some point we'll, we'll get back on the, on the Rocket League or the Scottish Lisa. <laughs> All right, and... Um, Kimberly, shoot me a, an email and I'll get you a um, a link. We'll get you in the we'll get you in the Discord. I'm sure you can easily find my email on the BLS BPS stuff. <laughs> Scottish Lisa, best game ever. All right, talk to you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>